All right, friends, it is first thing in the morning. I need to clock on to work in a few minutes. And Bridgerton decided to go ahead and drop the full season two trailer now. I knew it was coming today. I anticipated it more around lunchtime, but here we are. So I'm gonna manage to see if I can finagle this reaction two times in a row, we'll see. But I am very excited, as I'm sure we all are. And if you are here with me now, I'm sure you are very excited too. So let's see what we've got. Dearest reader, it has been said that competition is an opportunity for us to rise before our greatest of challenges. This is the season the Viscount intends to find a wife. <laughs> you honestly just did that? I believe I did. Your Majesty, may I present Miss Kate Sharma and Edwina Sharma. I only hope they like me. All you have to do this evening is remember what it is you're looking for. Someone charming. <laughs> and handsome, of course. But I cannot be the only one wondering if this former capital R of Rake is ready to flourish. It is only out of the greatest love of my family that I aim to choose a bride with my head and not my heart. But any suitor wishing to gain an audience with Miss Edwina Sharma must first tame her sister. The sister. The sister. Newton is an excellent judge of character. Oh, see? <laughs> Anthony will need all the help he can get. He seeks a wife only to fulfill his duty and does not believe in the true love you deserve. I should certainly not give him too much credit now, should we? <laughs> It is a poor player who plays the game and a wise one who plays their opponent. Are you in a losing mood? My mood shall remain unchanged. Can you really not see anything engaging about it? Yes, I suppose I can see how you might engage a person. Oh my, are you hurt? Come now, it is not proper to stare. powerful thing to meet someone and feel that you know them unlike any other after your father died a wall went up inside you as if love had become some weakness instead of your greatest strength is this young lady truly won your heart the one that makes it impossible for you to look away from them at any given moment what happens when duty is in conflict with the heart's true desire Then there is the potential for a considerable scandal indeed. My honor is hanging by a thread that grows more precarious with every moment in your presence. I want my sister to be happy. Can you make her happy? True love is worth it. Lady Whistledown's words carry far too much import. We must entrap the scribbler. Genius idea, ma'am. Yes, that is why I thought of it. Okay. okay. Um, okay. It started out a little slow, not gonna lie. But that makes sense. We're establishing the world. Anthony, Anthony. I know how it's pronounced in the show. I just think it makes me sound really pretentious when I try and mimic it. He doesn't know exactly what he wants. It hints at the emotional baggage he's carrying to this season with his father. So I think that that's great. One thing that stuck out to me the most, just from this first kind of view through, is the scenes that they intercut with Anthony on the horse through the rain. And I have to believe that that is the end. And so I think it's really interesting that they're setting up that climax. Potentially, this is all speculation with a storm. So if you know, you know, but there is that crisis at the end. So I think that that will be very interesting. It also will be interesting because the kind of emotional climax of the first season was played out in the rain or that resolution came in the rain and that's a similar emotional moment and I think it fits more with what we know from the book and both characters in that moment if it is indeed the moment I think it is and it might not be but I'll be interested to see what we get there. We have scenes of Pal Mal, so that is fantastic. We get that real sense of conflict between the two of them and that power struggle from that. And I think that's very much a scene that was given for the fans. I'm gonna watch a couple more times and figure out some more thoughts. Okay, so these are gonna be kind of some scattered thoughts. 
but bear with me. So the trailer, I feel like, kind of establishes obviously the conflict, that love-hate dynamic, and that push-pull between Kate and Anthony, but I think it also really establishes that kind of conflict between duty and love. And we see that pretty straightforward from Anthony, whatever baggage is kind of pushing him further into that duty corner or not. But I think we also see it with Kate and they make it pretty clear both in that shot where she's kind of on the sidelines watching and when she's kind of asking Edwina about him and there's that sense of protectiveness and you can feel how much she wants the best for her sister. So I'm very intrigued by that. And I'll be interested to see if the show plays up the dynamic of that, that kind of responsibility that's been thrust on Edwina's shoulders for her family, this sense that she has to save her family by making a good match. And I think that that's a really compelling dynamic for the sisters to pull upon outside of their genuine love and care for each other. So I will be really excited to see that. And again, a lot of the promotion materials has kind of leaned into this idea of a love triangle. If you've read the books, you know what to expect there. I don't think that that's a bad thing. I've been on the periphery, because I'm on the periphery of kind of everything with this, that felt a little angry about that. But I actually think that that could be really interesting narratively here, because there is the care on both sides. Kate and Edwina aren't being pitted against each other. They genuinely want the best for their sisters. So I think that that also will play into that idea of duty versus love. I also think that here we are going to see the test of the reformed rake. As Lady Whistledown says, capital R rake. This is a common trope in historical romance especially, and I have some upcoming reformed rakes that I'm sure I will be talking about as well. And we see the degree of rake differently for each series, but there is always this kind of sense that our hero is coming in with some baggage. I think authors like Lisa Kleypas, we see like the most on page in previous books before we get to that story, even like Sarah McLean. So we know that Anthony is a rake because the narrative tells us that, but the show has set itself up to show us that a little bit more. We saw active plot lines where he was engaged in amorous pursuits that were not with Kate. Between that and how we saw him with Daphne in the first season and arguably the first book, he's gonna have the most to kind of overcome especially for viewers of just the show. And I think that that's adding a little bit more weight to what that means, like what it means to be a rake. And I think it explains why Kate was so hesitant too. Like it's one thing to see it on the page when you know those two are going to be together or you want them together. And here, obviously I want them together. But you know, thinking about it as a woman, if I was entering this scene looking for a partner and this man had this kind of reputation, I'm going to view that potentially a little differently. So I think that that is definitely going to play into things. I definitely think we're going to see a continuation of some of those season one plot lines, especially because we do see an opera singer in the book. And honestly, it just wouldn't make sense if they're going to keep that piece, which to be fair, I don't know that they are, to introduce a new character. That just seems like a waste of time narratively. I don't know. But I'll be interested to see that. And along with that, because the setting matches, we did get some shots of the library and they looked like very emotionally involved shots. So I'm very excited about that. Additionally, there was a shot of Kate in bed kind of waking up and you got the feeling that she wanted to reach behind her, that Anthony was supposed to be there, that it was at that part of the narrative. And I am really, really compelled by that shot because it seems to mirror what we saw from season one with Lady Bridgerton. I think that that's a really interesting parallel to be drawing visually, knowing especially how pivotal Anthony's father is to his emotional journey. We see Lady Bridgerton widowed and mourning still in season one and this idea, and again, I am just kind of going with this mentally, I don't know, but it struck me, this idea that because Anthony is not willing to completely emotionally engage, in some ways, Kate is being left as a widow emotionally. So there's a lot there. Additionally, on the periphery, we did see some Daphne. I like the idea that she is gonna be talking some sense into Anthony, maybe being that emotional confidant because she has experienced love in a way that he has not. I like that we're setting up Benedict potentially as a confidant as well because we need to see more of him for his season. Eloise is looking great and I'm really interested to see 
how that dynamic of her entering society plays into things. We got a shot of Cressida, which I enjoyed because it indicates to me that she is going to be set up somewhat as an antagonist again. Mainly I'm thinking about that in terms of Penelope's journey. We did see some emotional shots from Penelope and they were cut to look like it involved Colin. So I don't know if we're going to get some of those Colin opens his mouth and his dumb moments that we get from the books that kind of show up as flashbacks in Penelope's book but show up in the moment in other books. I'll be interested to see that because we're definitely playing the long game. I'm going to be honest, the Lady Whistledown and who is Lady Whistledown plotline from like the society side of things I'm the least interested in outside of how it may change Penelope's story. Because if we get to Penelope's book and there are larger stakes to that reveal than just kind of trying to relieve some boredom for the ton, that could be intriguing. And it's good to have those other through lines for the series because like I said this is kind of going to be the test. We've not seen traditional romance series taken on in this way and I'm very very excited about it but there is a uniqueness to them and to the form and moving from couple to couple that like I said before a lot of people that jumped in just from the tv show and don't have a lot of history with romance novels as a genre as a form it's going to be different and it's different expectations than we've been conditioned to expect as television viewers. So I'm very, very interested in all of the potential there, the possibility of different forms of storytelling and new ways of construction. But this season is going to be the first time they've had to kind of shift focus. So I think it's being set up very well. They're clearly playing to the existing fans of Anthony and Kate, which I think is smart. And we have those other through lines that are there to help tie things together a little bit more neatly narratively. And I can't remember if I talked about this or not, but that river scene. We got some teaser images of this, like last week, the week before, with Anthony coming out and his shirt is soaked. That kind of Pride and Prejudice type imagery that has been talked about. I'm very excited for this. It's, it's visually pleasing, of course, but it's one, it tells us that we're getting a really fun scene. It kind of confirms that we're getting that. And there was a scene in book one that I really wanted that was kind of similar and it involved Anthony and Simon kind of fighting and they both fall in the river. And I, I missed that scene, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm happy to see that we're going to be getting Falling in the River Part 2, especially because it is such a good scene between Anthony and Kate. I figured based even on the teaser that we'd probably get it because we had enough establishing shots, glances between and whatnot in the park, but it's always good to get that confirmation. And of course we got plenty of shots of Newton, so we know that Newton will be playing just as prominently into this, but I'm very excited to see where this season goes. And while I didn't catch any references to it in the trailer, let me know if I'm wrong or if you thought something should have read as that, that being the B scene. I've been thinking about this a little bit recently in that just what, three years ago? Like maybe even back to when the Bridgerton prequels started getting published and it reinvigorated the love of Bridgerton within the romance community because that was a big deal. The B scene in this book and hopefully in this show, it was just a thing that would kind of pop back up and you'd hear murmurings and you'd be like, remember that time in the second Bridgerton book with the bee and everyone would be like, right, the bee, remember the bee? And there'd be a good giggle and it would just be a kind of fun moment. And I've been thinking about how that scene has kind of united a certain group of romance readers for over a decade, closer to two, if not actually two at this point. And in just a few short weeks, we're going to be inviting a whole new group of people into that. And there is such a joy to that. And I'm not an expert by any means. I have read this series multiple times. I'm a long-standing romance reader, but I'm not an expert. And I also, despite the fact that I have done a lot of videos on Bridgerton, don't consider myself too far down the fandom. And that's, I try and keep myself from going too far down any fandom, so. But it's just this moment where the community is widening and there's such a joy in that discovery and I'm excited to see that translated onto the screen, to see scenes and moments that I read as I was coming into my own translated and to be inviting more people along for the journey with the tremendous success of this show. So I don't know where exactly I'm going with that but I'm, I'm very excited to see 
what season two is, especially as I think it is going to continue to have an impact on the romance community. I'll continue to collect my thoughts, but what did you guys think of the trailer? What direction do you think this season is going in? What do you think they're going to be focusing on the most heavily playing with? And what are you most excited about? So yeah, in just a couple short weeks, all of us will be able to talk about that bee together. So see you on the other side. Thanks for hanging out. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. And yeah.